Hello, my name is AJ, and I'd like to do a demonstration on how to replace the uh, drive belt inside of a um, 80s vintage quarter inch uh, tape cartridge for data storage. Some vintage stuff, and uh, I know that there are people out there that know how to do this very well, but I've never seen a video about it, so I thought I'd make one. Uh, the person that gave me this idea is actually the software curator of the um, Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. Um, he did a write-up about it, which I think is fantastic, and I know he has a lot of experience doing this. Uh, these ideas come from him, uh, but he hasn't been able to uh, make a video, so I thought I would do that uh, for anyone that might want to watch. So, this tape cartridge um, has two reels, two reels in it, and they are kept in sync with a drive belt that goes through here and around this cap stand right here. And when the tape drive moves the tape, uh, there's a roller wheel that pinches against this, and uh, the tape moves actually in an inverse direction to the direction that this cap stand is being pushed. So I'm moving the cap stand this way, the tape is moving this way. Okay, so <clears throat> with age, and these tapes are now uh, at, at least 25, sometimes in, in some cases 30 and more years old by now, um, this band will lose its elasticity. And when that happens, when the tape is run back and forth in the tape drive, um, the reels will get out of sync and there will be a slack in the tape. And that, of course, is a problem because not maintaining good tension means that you're not going to get a good read on the head. And if the slack gets bad enough, the tape will start to wrap up upon itself and then it will be a mess. That's particularly a problem if you're wanting to restore or read the data that was written 30 years ago on one of these tapes. You want to keep the tension just right and uh, not wrinkle it. I'm sure that's the case with, uh, with, with any tape or magnetic media like that. But this is an example of one of the tapes that has uh, had a, the band uh, elastic wear out. And I've run it back and forth uh, to try to read some files in one of my tape drives. And I've noticed that this has loosened. And if you can see that there, that is uh, a sign of it just loosening a little bit. Um, I've had one that was much worse. Um, I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> um, but this is, this is just where the band is starting to lose elasticity and it's starting to loosen up. This is bad enough that I, I don't think we're going to get a good read on this because, you know, this is not going to be held properly against the head. If I were to let this go, um, not only would it not read, but as the tape drive moved back and forth trying, this would wrap up around here and you could actually see, you know, looseness. Well, look, you could see that right in there just a little bit. I'm not sure if I get the right angle but uh, the, the tape is coming off the reel there. And so this is, uh, this is a time where this elastic band needs to be replaced. But the question then is, well, what do you replace it with? Where do you get replacement bands? It's not like, um, you know, there's a whole lot of these tape cartridges out there. There are some, you can find uh, actually a fair amount, fairly inexpensively on eBay. The cartridge model that, that uh, is recommended to replace this with is actually, the uh, DC6150, the 3M, I guess it doesn't necessarily matter what brand, but this is a slightly newer cartridge, and it seemed that uh, the manufacturing process or whatever uh, components were used to make up the band lasted longer. Um, and so 30 years later, they, uh, they still retain their elasticity, particularly if they haven't been used a lot, whereas um, this model and older has a tendency for that elasticity to wear out and, this, and for this to happen. So the recommendation then is to actually take uh, a band out of a, uh, of a 6150 cassette and to put that into one of the older ones where we can see that the elasticity is wearing out. So that is what I'm going to try to do now. So let's see if we can do that. Now I found a box of these that were unopened. You know, so. I imagine that the uh, bands in these are going to be probably as good as I possibly could get because it's clearly unused. So I'll move these aside. The first thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to remove uh, the bad belt from this particular cartridge. I like to make sure that, uh, that, that before I 
make any changes to this tape that I have the tape in, um, in, a, in, a, in a position where there isn't any data um, that is going to be on the surface that I'll be touching uh, just to be more safe than sorry so I did some research and uh, this is uh, this is a manual for um, Archive, who made uh, tape drives, the Archive Scorpion. This, I find, is a very helpful and educational manual for me for learning how these systems work because there's just not a whole lot of information available online. Um, in this, um, it shows me actually how to be able to tell where you are uh, visually in the position in the tape. Um, there are actually holes in the tape. And there's three sets, one, two, three. Each of them are 18 inches apart. Um, and then there is either a, there's a longer space, either uh, 36 inches or 48 inches. <clears throat> but just to see an example of what one of these uh, double holes looks like, this one is aligned to that right here. I'll show you right here. And uh, there it is right there. Get a good shot of that. Where you can see that's where those, what those holes look like. There we go. Okay. So there I found uh, the single hole. And so I know that the, the single hole at the, uh, at the top, and I guess that would be orienting, orienting it correctly to align it with the, the diagram here. Um, I know that the data then is on this side. The data should have been starting to be writing on this side. And so what I'm going to want to do is to wind that, and remember I'm I'm, I'm moving I'm moving the cap stand this way so the tape goes this way I'm going to move the tape down so that I wind all of the all of the tape with the data around um, the supply reel and so that I get into the area where I'm fairly confident that there's no data and I'm probably going to go all the way to finding uh, the first set of, uh, of double holes and that'll take a while Okay, and here I've just come across the first the first set. You can see that okay? Yeah, there we go. I just come across the first set of uh of double dots, double holes, whatever it is that you want to call that. So I know that I'm now getting closer to the beginning of the tape. This seems like a pretty good area uh to begin working on removing the bad uh, elastic band in here. So I will get to that now. So I'm going to want to remove, um, there's two screws that hold the tape together and they're on this back plate here. So we're going to run remove these screws but then we're going to turn the tape over because we want to pop the, t the, the top off uh, because this plate actually contains the pins that hold all of these spindles together. I tried it the first time the other way and that was fairly disastrous so we'll try this and I think it'll work out a little bit better. So removing these screws here and now turn the tape over before popping the cover off. And there we go. The cover is off. And here we have it. This is the tape. Now, I can already see that, uh, you know, we have some floppiness going on here. So this definitely needs to be replaced so that it holds everything in line better. So taking it off is the easy part. We'll just gently slip this off right there and there it is the drive belt that has lost its elasticity and it really has um, as I try to stretch it it doesn't have a whole lot of stretch to it okay so I'm going to set this aside knowing that this is one of the bad ones and now I'm going to very gently look at uh, the tape here. I see that as I wound this around manually, now the tape has come out of alignment and it's, uh, it's risen on the edge there. 
tape is rigid on the edge there, and so I'm going to want to see if I can um, do a wind and a wind back a little bit just to just to get it in good condition because I want I want things to be well aligned. Now I'm going to try to be careful. I may get close to the area where the data is uh, where the data is, and I'd like to stay as far away from that as possible. Also, it may go without saying. But uh, I'm trying very carefully to keep um, metal tools that may have been magnetized away from this. For example, that screwdriver that I had, um, I'm pretty sure that uh, it has been magnetized because I, quite frankly, keep it on a magnetic strip for storage. So I'm going to keep it far away uh, from the tape so that I don't actually make it in contact with the tape and accidentally erase some of the data that I'm working so hard to restore. Okay, so. I think I've straightened that out, so I'm just going to gently wind the tape back here. There we go. And I'm going, I have a different perspective than the camera does, uh, but I just see right there, right there I can see that I have uh, just reached the point where there's those double holes right there. That's where I want to be. Okay, now, um, paying close attention to the way the tape winds around these posts and poles. I want to um, keep it that way as much as possible. Thankfully I have other uh, cassettes for reference in case I um, slip it off of one of them so I can just look back at this. But, where should we go from here? Ah, now I'm going to set this aside and we're going to take one of the uh, DC6150 tapes apart and we're going to use the belt out of one of those for greater elasticity. So here we go. Setting this aside. And this is one of the DC6150 tapes. Grab this dangerous screwdriver here. Quickly get it out of the way. Now, just pop this off, same, just like that. There we go. There we go. Okay. So this is a new tape, fairly new tape. I think I did a little testing with it, but it seemed to work just fine. And this is the elastic band now that we're going to use. And I can tell already. You see how that works? It just springs right back there. I can feel that this is so much better than that other one. I can tell just by, you know, the stretching of this that there's very little stretch left. I feel like I'm going to break it just by just by doing that. And this one seems to have much greater elasticity, just like that. So I think uh, it's actually a very good thing to be able to use this one. So slipping it off is just as simple. There we go. And so now this is the good drive bound drive band. Okay, and I can feel that that's um, much better. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside. This is uh, the blank 6150 tape. And unfortunately, now that I've stolen the drive band out of it, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to keep it, but I am not sure what I'm going to do with it. So in a box it goes. Over here. Now, back to the tape uh, that has the data on it that I want to keep. This is where the tricky part comes in. So I'm sure I'll be editing out, editing out some of the uh, long, drawn, and boring pieces, but don't let that deceive you. Uh, this, is, this is the very difficult part. So we're just going to slip this around here, like so. And see how difficult it is. <laughs> 
And then the first one, we want to slip it around uh, the first wheel. Idler wheel, I think, is what you would call it. We want to slip it around is this one, the one underneath the large. Um, yeah, I guess, at this case, it's the supply reel. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because I'm going to want to pull this across onto this, and two things are going to happen. The belt is going to have a tendency to slip underneath this, um, this supply reel, uh, because it doesn't have, you know, the tape is so far out, it doesn't have the guides uh, to keep it in place that, that this wheel does. And it's also going to try to slip underneath this cap stand here. It's going to try to slip underneath that. So what I'm going to try to do, this is the painstaking part, is I'm going to try to put it on top, hold it there, try to hold it closer to the, the, uh, the top of that as I put it back on here. Move that tape out of the way so I don't accidentally crinkle it. And uh, there's really just a lot of trial error and uh, patience involved here. Okay, so now I have that on the top. I try to keep that taut there as I fish that around. All right, so now I've done that. By the way, I'm tempted to use various tools here, but I want to be very careful again to keep all the tools that I'm used to be only plastic, uh, something that isn't metal and, and can be magnetized. And I'm pretty sure that the tools that I usually use around here are magnetized because again I keep them on a on a magnetic strip. So, all right. So what I like to do at this point is I think I've done a fairly good job of keeping the of keeping the belt higher up, keeping the belt higher up on the uh, on the tape. You might be able to see, yes, you can see a little bit there how the, the band is a little bit higher up. It's not quite sneaking underneath the reel. And um, I think the same, well, you can't see that because it's it's held up. It's, it's uh, yeah, get a little, little tape wrinkle there. It's probably not good for it. But you can just see that there just a little bit where I have the band towards the top. Okay, now, I'm going to take off this wheel right here. See, I'm holding this, holding this tight. I'm going to take off this wheel right here. And there's there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just what I've found that works. And uh, and keep it taut like this. And I'm going to actually slide the wheel over the post. And let's see how I do here if I actually get it. And did I do it? I think I did it because the band now did not slip underneath this or this. I successfully kept it above. So um, I think this is only my second or third try at this, so I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good about being able to do that without more effort. Okay, good. Now, we notice that there's still slack in the tape here that I definitely want to um, that I definitely want to clear up before we move this too much one direction or the other because you can see how easy it is for you know excess tape to actually wrap its way around uh, this belt or get caught on something of the wrong that we don't want it caught on so I guess the best way to do this is to take um, a non magnetizable object like this plastic um, lead pencil here and I'm just going to Pull the band away from the contact area of the tape on the small reel, and then I'm going to turn the small reel to take up the slack. And as soon as I have it pretty tight, hopefully not too tight, I'll just um, let this snap back in position. And I think now I have some pretty good tension. Yes, yes I do. Just like that. And hopefully it's not too much. Again, I'm not an expert here, so I don't know the exact right amount of tension, but uh, that's what I've gone for. So now I have changed the band in um, my older, in this case, uh, DC 600A tape. And I think probably before long I ended up changing it in my DC 300XL tape here as well, because I'm sure this one has gone bad as well. 
Um, but I'm going to put the cover back on, which should be as simple as slipping it back in place because thankfully all of these uh, pins held all the pulleys in place, so it's just a matter of getting the alignment there, making sure I don't accidentally pinch the tape up here. That looks pretty good. It kind of snaps in place all nice and neat like that. And uh, oh, that's moving, moving really nice there. Moving really nice. I put a small wrinkle in the tape right there. Um, if you're going to wrinkle the tape somewhere, I suppose before the data is written is the only place to do that. I'll avoid it as much as possible, but that's one of the, I think, important reasons I wanted to make sure that I moved the tape uh, so that I was um, potentially working with and to touching the areas that had no data on it, um, the parts that are further here on the tape. So, um, having said all that, I suppose now I will put the screws back in and I uh, should be ready to read the data off this tape with greater confidence knowing that um, it's much less likely to uh, destroy itself getting all wrapped up uh, around the spindles and such and tension should be good so it's a much higher chance of getting a good read on this and there it is band replaced okay thank you very much for watching I hope this was uh, educational and helpful for you I look forward to your comments at the bottom. Take care. Bye-bye.